Hey guys, it's Claire with Trellis 925. I'm so excited to talk to you today about layouts. I know you guys have been really excited to know about like how we do it and what you should do for your own wedding. Um, one of the first things that I want to point out to you guys is there are multiple levels of packages. So the way that layouts kind of work depends upon your package. If you're going to do like a DIY reception and ceremony um, or like an hourly rental venue, you're going to have to provide us with your layout. We will not create one for you. However, if you got one of the bigger packages, the premium or the platinum packages that come with the coordinator, we are going to help you out with the layout as soon as we can. Um, but for those of you who want to get a head start, really want to start thinking about your decor, your layout and everything, we're going to start right now figuring all that out. All right. So first things first is Obviously, this is the Grand Central. This is where the ceremony typically takes place. Again, if you're having a DIY, you are not going, you may or may not have a flip, right? So this might be set up only in one way or with the flip, we'll do both ways. In this room, you can fit up to 110 seated. We say with tables, I really only like to do up to 100 because I like to give everybody, you know, a little bit of extra elbow room. I don't want to like cram you in. I don't want to make sure, you know, everybody is like, ah, how do I get out? Like scoop pack of sardines. I don't want that. So I say 100 in this room. We can fit up to 130 total seated in the venue. The way we would do that is that we actually have over here, we would put a pipe and drape right along this tunnel right here, which extends the Grand Central room to include up to about 20 or so more people. So we can fit up to 130 guests. That's what we say for seated uh, dinner options. Um, if you do have the 130 guests, you may not be able to have your cake right against this grass wall. In that case, we would move your cake against the graffiti tube over here so that it goes back into cocktail hour still. Again, imagining the pipe and drape right here. The thing that we want to think about is, you know, we have rounds as well as banquet tables. When you're thinking about doing round tables, we can probably, we only have six of them. So we can only fit up to 60 people at round tables. If you have like 75, you can do a mix match of rounds as well as banquet tables. And once you hit about 90 guests, you're going to have to do only banquet tables, except for maybe putting rounds in here if you go over that amount. Um, the way that the banquet tables work really well for those higher guest counts is placing them horizontally along these walls right here, and then having the wood iron pretty tables right down the middle with maybe your sweet tart table up front. This is like the standard way I've seen all of the weddings uh, plan their layouts. However, there's like other options. You know, you can do a U shape around that fits about, I think about 45 people if you do a U shape this way. Um, and then I've also seen like an E formation, right? And that fits, I believe, 110 guests. Um, Awesome. Going from dinner, talking about dinner layouts, I kind of want to talk about your uh, cake, your welcome tables, uh, maybe if, if you have a photo booth, where all those tables are going to be located. So typically for the welcome table, we see it mainly right at, at the entrance of the ceremony room. If you guys remember from your tour, the ceremony room is all closed. Your guests come through the hallway in this way. So I find this table to be the absolute best when planning for like a card box or a gift table or a guest book. Um, then as we continue this way, you know, this lovely podium thing right here is great for putting pictures against or, you know, having a, a sign in sheet. Um, I see a lot of memory photos right here. And I also see over against this wall, many of you guys might remember this door and wondering why it's here. Um, it actually opens up to a cork board. 
And you can put like other photos of you guys right here if you wanted to bring in a little bit more personalization into your ceremony and or your reception. Again, it closes, so if you only want it up once and you don't want to see it again, you can always just shut them and never have to look at them again. Um, and then over this way, typically this table right here is our cake table. This is normally where all of the desserts go. If you wanted to use this table in your dinner seated layout, you would just need to make sure you provide another table for your cake and think about that. A lot of the times it's pushed up against this wall, these two chairs are not here, and it's a really great backdrop for your cake. If you're planning on having like a stationary appetizer location, I always like to put the appetizers against this wall. Or if you're having a photo booth, this is also a great wall to put the photo booth. Anything really to kind of spruce it up, I really like to do. Great Northern Room is typically where we have the buffet. It's also where we say that the caterers should be doing a plated, state, or a plated meal. That's where they're going to go. They're gonna be put in here so that they are able to go out, bring the plates out very easily to your guests without having to worry about you know, the food getting cold or anything like that. And for a buffet meal, it's a really great flow around for your guests to pick up the food and go back to their seats. Um, DJ, I wanna to talk to you guys about DJ. Most of the time we see the DJ over here in the Sojourn Lounge. We see him, mainly, him or her mainly in the corner right here as that gives the most space available. When you do put the DJ back there, you may want to consider having a ceremony set up for the DJ in that room over there because he's not going to be able to see your processional and recessional, so that really helps out a lot. If you don't want to have two setups because that can be a little bit more expensive depending upon the DJ that you go with, I suggest putting your DJ right in front of these windows so that he's able to see your or ceremony space right down there. Um, I also like keeping the high tops right in these corners, especially if your dance floor is right here, as that's a great place to put for your guests to put their drinks. Um, when talking about the lounge furniture, I like to keep it here. I find it's a great place in between bar and dance floor for your guests to sit and relax and have like a loungy area. If you wanted more space for your bar because you do have, you know, a very rowdy crowd who wants to drink a lot and you know they're just going to be crammed at the bar, you might want to move these over to the blank wall over here. Um, or mix and match. I've seen the couch in front of the graffiti tube, I've seen the two chairs in front of the graffiti tube, and I've seen them also out on the balcony. Don't forget you do have the little balcony space right out here to put additional furniture and to invite your guests outside, which was absolutely wonderful for COVID when they're a little bit more uh, concerned about staying inside of places. Um, typically, the trough tables stay exactly where they are. Um, and if you're doing a DIY, I did want to point out that you would have to pay for the furniture moving fee should you want to move anything around. If you want to move the gold chairs and the smaller like high tops, that's the standard moving fee. If you want to move this couch or those trough tables, that is the premium moving fee. And I believe that's it. <laughs> so it was great talking to you guys. I will talk to you again next week and have fun. Bye.